Michael Stoltenberg from Brown Deer, Wisconsin. This is my entry in the hobbyist category in the Dare to Dream Different contest. Uh, for my project, I picked a remote temperature monitoring system. Um, I wanted to pick something that would be practical and useful and uh, make use of as much of the hardware um, that we were given for this uh, contest as well as uh, the .NET micro framework. Here's my uh, project over here. Um, it's basically just using the standard uh, Tahoe 2 board. I have the XP module plugged into it for wireless uh, access to the temperature monitors. The, on the screen here, we have support for up to eight different sensors. Um, I, for the user interface, um, I decided to use the touch screen so the buttons don't really do anything. Everything is done through the touch screen. Um, this first uh, sensor value here is a temperature reading that's coming from the, the board itself. Uh, you can see it's kind of varying quite a bit. This is a known problem with either the board firmware or uh, the temperature sensor hardware itself. So I decided to include it in this demo um, so we could see an actual temperature value changing. Um, so we'll just go ahead and uh, uh, go through some of the functionality that I've included. Uh, each one of these, you can click on any one of these uh, entries on the screen with uh, your finger or a stylus. And it brings up for each sensor, There's uh, you can change the name, colors, and sample rate, and there's also a graph. So let's go ahead and click on the name here. <clears throat> um, I created a QWERTY keyboard interface so someone can uh, put in text uh, easily here. So we can set backspace, we can put in different letters, numbers. Backspace again. Also use space. You can see you can uh, change the uh, uh, text for the sensor pretty easily. Let's go ahead and hit OK on here. The colors and the sample rate. So each uh, box on the screen I can change the colors and the sample rate. Go ahead and change this one to yellow for the text color and blue for the background. And we'll leave the sample rate at 5 seconds. It can go all the way up to 1 hour. 1 sample per hour. Let's just take a look and see what that looks like. <clears throat> so, you can see that the text has changed and the color as well. And our temperatures are still updating. Let's go ahead and the last item on here is a graph. <clears throat> so, this graph is showing the same color that you selected from the main screen. And the temperature range on the y-axis here is the lowest temperature measurement to the highest temperature measurement. So you can see the sensor on the board is, is varying quite widely. So this is a good way to see, uh, get a snapshot of what, um, what's happening with the particular temperature sensor you're watching. Uh, it'll record up to about 300 data points uh, for each sensor. So let's go back to the main screen here. So we've been so far just talking about the board temperature sensor. I've also created a, a remote sensor, which is using the wireless. Um, this module here is a small CPU card. It has a, a microchip PIC processor in it. It also has the uh, XP wireless module, um, just like the main board, to communicate the temperature remotely. And it has an analog uh, temperature sensor, which is connected to the board uh, through this wire. Let's go ahead and put the battery in here, turn it on. <clears throat> so the flashing light here indicates that it's working. There's that yellow light there which every time that blinks it's transmitting um, a temperature sensor value from this sensor. So let's take a look at the main screen again. You can see here we've got 73 degrees which is coming from this, this sensor. Which is basically the room temperature. 
Um, what we can do with this to kind of see the some of the temperature uh, value change is uh, go ahead and we'll put this in the freezer. This actually does transmit through the the metal box of the refrigerator or freezer, which is sort of surprising to me actually, but we'll uh, leave that in there and see what happens. So that's that value here. So what, what I've done with these sensors is that each one of them transmits its own ID. So this first sensor is ID1, the second one is ID2, so the protocol transmits an ID number so it knows which spot on the screen it should go to. And you can see this is starting to drop already. You know, you can go ahead with these things and, and change them just like we did with the first one. So we can go ahead and maybe change this one to freezers there. Let's say freeze. So that's that's the one in the freezer, and that's going down. Uh, the other thing that I did is uh, I created a application that runs on a PC, which uses the uh, um, XB USB interface card that we got to transmit a temperature sensor, which is connected to a, a USB port as well. Um, I wrote an application which reads a temperature sensor, this temperature sensor and transmits it out. So let's go ahead and start that. This initial value is a little bit off, but then after that it's reading in Fahrenheit. So you can see that's 67 on there. Let's go take a look at the screen. <coughs> you can see there's a 67 that's being transmitted through this one. I also have this transmitting the CPU temperature which is uh, um, 96 right now. So it's actually transmitting two different temperatures through the, the protocol, two different messages, one for sensor 2 and one for sensor 3. Let's go ahead and put this in the, some hot water and uh, see what that does. So what we basically have on here is we have our board temperature, we have the remote sensor which is in the freezer, and we have this third one is the um, USB temperature sensor and which is in the hot water you can see it's starting to go up a little bit it's going up to 88 and this last temperature is the CPU temperature of the PC that's being transmitted hopefully you can see that so we're we're updating these, they're, they're basically all set to five second update rates. So, running out of time here, uh, in conclusion, uh, I really uh, thought the .NET Micro Framework worked really well for this application. It has uh, a lot of uh, capabilities and uh, um, things that could be used, and especially in the case where not only boards with the display, but if uh, somebody has a board that doesn't have a display, a cheaper board, .NET Micro Framework would make a lot of sense uh, to use in that kind of application. Um, the only problems I really had were really more hardware related, like say that temperature sensor, the uh, SD card, I wanted to save some data values of that but I couldn't get that to work um, either. So uh, just a quick comment if uh, as far as know making this more of a, a commercial application even though this is a hobby hobbyist category um, would be to you know improve the uh, packaging of this stuff make smaller temperature sensors cheaper temperature sensors um, that would be probably the main things that would need to be done to this to make it uh, um, more cheaper and easier to to use so that's that's all the time I have. Uh, thank you very much for selecting uh, um, my project, and I uh, uh, hope to see you in Redmond.